This is section 6.7, part 4. We're still calculating work, and this is our third and last application for work. We'll be talking about the work required to pump a fluid out of a tank. In this case, I'd like to actually read the example first just so you get a feel for this, and then we'll talk about how we're going to approach it. In our example, we've got the cylindrical water tank. They tell us the radius is 10 feet and the height is 30 feet. It's half full of water. And I'd like to know how much work is required to pump all the water over the upper rim of the tank. First of all, we're definitely talking about a situation in which we're going to need an integral, right? This isn't going to be a constant anything. At any particular height, I can imagine almost like a thin slab of water, almost like circular disks of water going up. But notice, that a circular disk of water here near the bottom is going to have a long distance to go, and a circular disk of water near the middle is going to have a smaller distance to go. So I don't have a constant distance for each circular slab of water, meaning I'll definitely need an integral. So our approach, no matter what shape we have, and we're starting with a cylinder here, we're going to imagine taking these cross-sectional slabs of fluid and calculating the work to pump each slab to its desired location. We'll then add up, or really integrate, the work to calculate the total work for all the slabs. Now, there's a couple of things here. First of all, we always know work is force times distance. And we've already seen a couple of examples of how we calculate force, right? In the problems where we were lifting things, usually we used F equals MA to calculate our force. In Hooke's Law, we usually or always actually used uh, F equals KX for the springs. Here, the force is actually the weight of the water. You'll have to be a little bit alert. There's two different possibilities for how we'll calculate the weight of the water, depending on whether we're in the American system or the international system, and therefore whether we know our uh, values for density of weight density or mass density. I'm going to tell you density for water is, in the American system, we usually are given or know the weight density, which is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And by the way, I have to apologize. I think I used a delta in an earlier video. Your book actually uses a W for weight density, so I am going to switch over and use the W to be consistent with your textbook. Or sometimes we know the mass density. Typically we know this if we're in international units or CGS units. The mass density is one gram per cubic centimeter. That's actually how the gram was defined in the first place. That would be our mass density that we usually call rho. Or if you're in CGS, that would be in a CGS rather. It's a thousand kilograms per cubic meter if you're in international units. And again, that would still be rho, because it's still a mass density. So, to calculate F, which has to be a weight, if we already know the weight density, all we have to do is multiply it by the volume to get our force, right? That's going to be Weight density times volume gives us force, no problem. But if we know the mass density, we have to get our force by doing mass times acceleration first before we multiply the volume. So force would be rho times g times v. And I probably could have done that a little bit better, sorry. Let me change my arrow system here. If I know the weight density, 
force is weight density times volume. If I know the mass density, force is the mass density times G, that's that MA, times the volume. So these are two equations that you'll want to kind of keep in mind and that we'll need to use throughout these fluid pumping problems. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. I probably should keep this so that my uh, picture is on the screen for a little bit longer. Sorry. So in our problem, we have a cylindrical water tank. We know the radius is 10 feet. And we know that the total height of this tank is 30 feet. We also know that it's only half full of water. So I'm going to kind of denote that by saying this part then is just 15. And this is also 15. My goal is to figure out how much work is required to pump all the water in this lower half here up over the top rim of the tank. So, as advertised, our goal, first of all, is going to be to say, let's just imagine one thin slab of water. I'm going to choose sort of a random height here. And I'm going to draw this like a little thin disk of water. And I want to imagine, what will it take to pump that thin disk of water all at the same height up to the top of the tank. All right, we need some uh, coordinate systems here. As is typical, I'm going to go ahead and say x equals 0 represents the bottom. This is just going to be at some arbitrary x value because I'd have lots of little thin slabs at different x values, different heights. I know this is x equals 15 where the water ends, and I know this is x equals 30 at the top of the tank. Okay. Let's start by getting a force e equation. In this case, um, we are in the American units. We've got feet and pounds and stuff like that, right, is what we'll want. So we know the weight density in the American units, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So I'm going to use W equals, or excuse me, F equals WV this time, just because of the system that I'm in. My weight density, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, times the volume of the water in this little thin slab. Now since my little thin slab is a circular disk, right, a tiny thin little cylinder, its volume would be pi r squared h. Okay, you'll always want to think about the shape of this. The problems I'm going to do with you today will have circular slabs. Um, the rectangular slabs are actually a little easier to do. I'm letting you explore those on your own. But for the ones I'm going to do today, we'll be using that pi r squared h. Pi r squared for the circle times the height of that little thin disk. Probably not unsurprisingly, since it's a little thin disk, I'm going to assume that delta x here is the height of it. And we already know the radius is 10, right? The radius is consistently 10 all the way through here. So I actually know a lot about this. 62.4 pounds per cubic foot times pi times 10 feet for the radius squared times that height of delta x feet. Notice I've got cubic feet here, feet squared and feet all of those feet are going to cancel out, right? And I'll just end up with my force in pounds, which is exactly what I want. 
So let's see. If I multiply 62.4, 10 squared would be 100. That will give me 62.40 times pi times delta x pounds. What about my distance? Let me go back up to my picture again for a moment. How far do I have to move this slab of water? Well, I have to move it all the way to the top of the tank. So if this is at a height of x, and I have to move it up to a height of 30, the distance that I have to move it would be 30 minus x. So I'm just going to add that to my little list of known facts. And now that I've got force and distance, I'm ready to calculate work. I know I'm going to have to integrate to do all of the slabs, so I'm going to integrate force times distance. My force, 6,240 pi times the delta x that I know is going to end up being a dx. Sneak that in at the end there. And then the distance, 30 minus x. All right, finally, I just need my limits of integration. And I'm going to notice that the actual water that I'm moving is all between x equals 0 and x equals 15. So those will become my limits of integration. And I actually didn't preview this one, so let's just go ahead and type this one into the calculator together. And I got a lot of work to do this. Over 6 million, and that would be in foot pounds. All right. Let's take a look at two more examples similar to this, but with some challenges of their own. The next one. Let's see here. Um, we've got a conical tank filled to within two feet of the top. So the top two feet are empty. And this time it's filled not with water but with oil. And we're, we're told the density. We almost have to be unless it's water, which we know. So this density is known as a weight density. It's pounds per cubic foot. So that's great. I'm finding the work required to pump all the oil to an outlet three feet above the top of the tank. So let's go ahead and put our um, coordinate system in here right away. I'd like to go ahead and say that, again, the bottom here would be x equals 0. The level that the oil is filled to is two feet from the top. And it's 10 feet tall, so this would be an x equals 8. Top of the tank here is x equals 10. And then one more piece of information. We need to go 3 feet above the top of the tank. So we actually have to go all the way to x equals 13 when we pump the oil out. Okay. All right, I think that's everything they told me in the problem. We'll start just like we did before by coming up with a, an equation for our force. Since I was given the weight density, I'm going to go with WV, which in this case is and we saw last time how the units worked out just fine, so I'm not going to clutter it this time. I'm just going to put the numbers in. We saw how those cubic feet canceled out and just gave us pounds. So 57 
And once again, same idea. Different levels have a different distance to go, so I can't do this all together. I have to imagine a little slab of water at a particular height. So notice the cross section is a circle again. And I'm just going to say, let's imagine that being at some random height x. And we'll make the thickness of that slab delta x once again. And since it is a circular disk, I know that my volume for that disk is pi r squared h. All right, here's the complicating factor this time. Unlike the cylinder, where the radius was always 10, imagine all the little disks that you would have to draw here. The radius of those disks is going to change, right? The radius is going to be smaller down here than it is up here. So that r is not going to be a constant this time. Okay? The height's no problem. That's delta x. In fact, it always is going to be. It's the radius that I have to play with a little bit. What I'm going to do is use some similar triangles. I'm going to say, let's imagine for a moment, the radius and the height. Notice the height is actually x. If I compare the radius and height at this particular level to the radius and height for my entire cone, right, the radius of the whole cone would be 5. The height for the whole cone is 10. So I could write a little similar triangle equation. r over x equals 5 over 10. So r would be 1 half multiplied by x. That's what I'm going to use to plug in here for my radius. It's not a constant. It changes depending on the height that I've chosen for my little slab of water. So I have 57 pi times my 1 half x for the radius squared times my height delta x. which if I work this out, uh, half squared will be a fourth, so I'll have 57 pi over 4 times x squared delta x. All right, what about distance? Well, if I'm here at a height of x, I've already gone up x units. I have to go all the way up to the 13, so I'd have 13 minus x for my distance. And I'm ready now to calculate work. Force times distance. Of course, I know I have to integrate. And so in our case, we'll integrate force times distance. The force, 57 pi over 4x squared times that delta x, which I'll write over here as a dx, times the distance, 13 minus x. Originally, the oil in the tank went from x equals 0 to x equals 8. So those are going to be my limits of integration. Now, by the way, I didn't do this on the last one, um, but it's certainly something we can do. We, we saw this before when we were doing our uh, volumes of revolution and stuff. If you want a more exact answer, remember that you can pull the constants out of the integral. So let me just remind you of that by doing it that way this time, instead of having a rounded decimal answer. If we want to, we can do just this part in the calculator and then multiply it by 57 pi over 4. So I've got 57 pi over 4. And let's see if I change that to a fraction. Oh, come on. That's... that's 
eleven ninety four and two thirds, right? Point six repeating is two thirds. My calculator just doesn't want to acknowledge that right now. So let's see, what would that be? Spend more time doing arithmetic than anything else here. Uh, 1194 times 3. Plus 2. It's 3584 thirds. And let's see, uh, 57 divided by 3 is 19. And what's 3584 divided by 4? So I had end up with 19 times 896, or 17,024 pi, and that would be foot pounds, if I want to go with an exact answer. Okay. Um, in general, I'm perfectly fine accepting decimal values, usually in real life. That's what we would probably give anyway. I just wanted to show you, like, if you do some of the problems in the book, they'll often give exact values, and that's usually how we could go about getting those. All right, got one more of these to do with you today. In this third example, our tank is now a hemisphere. The hemisphere has a radius of 5 meters. So let me put that in right away. And it's filled with water. So water, I do know both weight density, if it's uh, American units, or mass density, which is probably going to be the case in this case since I'm looking at international units. Find the work required to empty the tank by pumping all of the water to an outlet one meter above the tank. And this is filled with water this time, so we'll assume the water goes all the way to the top. All right, I'm going to set up my coordinate system first. So starting at the very bottom, we'll call that x equals 0. This would be x equals 5. And we know we want to go up one additional meter. So we're going to go up here to x equals 6 to pump the water out. All right, we would like to find our equation for force. Uh, let me draw in the slab of water first, though. If I imagine a little slab of water somewhere in this thing, put it right about here. Again, notice that my cross section is going to be a circle, so I'm really thinking about a little thin disk of water. Okay. And we'll assume that that's at some random height x. I need the equation for the force. And this time, since we have international units, we know the mass density rather than the weight density. So I'm going to have to take my mass density rho times the acceleration of gravity times the volume. Mass times acceleration here, giving me weight or force. All right. Let's see. Since we've got meters, we'd be going with meters and kilograms. And so our mass density would be 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. G for our international units is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then our volume Again, this is a little thin disk, so we're going to go with pi r squared h. All right, so what have we got here? We have um, 9,800. I'm going to write out the units just, I don't know, 
for fun, sort of. Kilogram meters over meters cubed times seconds squared. And let's see, we got pi. We got our radius squared times our height. Our height is no problem. The height's going to be delta x again. But I do need to think about that radius one more time. So what have we got going on here? Well, the radius is not constant, right? We would have a smaller radius down here than we would have up here. The radius is going to vary. So I need to come up with some kind of an expression for my radius r. This time, because the sides are curved rather than straight like the cone, I can't use similar triangles. I'm going to need a different approach. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to sketch in a little right triangle. Like so. This is the radius that I want to find. This is actually one of the radius or radii of the original whole hemisphere. So just like this was 5, this is just another radius of the hemisphere that goes all the way to the edge. It's also going to be 5, right? All the radii of a hemisphere are the same. This height is x. And since this whole thing is another radius, 5, this would have to be 5 minus x. So that means that I could set up a Pythagorean theorem to solve for r, my radius. So let's do that. r squared plus 5 minus x squared equals 5 squared. Uh, r squared plus 25 minus 10x plus x squared equals 25. And subtract off the 25s, so r squared would be 10x minus x squared. And I actually want r squared anyway, so I'm just going to put that 10x minus x squared right in here for r squared. Now, all of the distance units were in meters, so I just want to point out to you at this point when I squared the radius, I would have meters squared at this point. Just playing with the units again a little bit. All right, finally we have the height, which was delta x, and that would be in meters. So here is our equation for f. First of all, notice meters squared and meters to the first would be meters cubed. It's going to cancel out those meters cubed like so. And then the kilogram meters per second squared, I know you may not remember this offhand, but just a reminder, and by the way, this is all on your notes sheet, right, all this stuff that we've been talking about. Um, kilogram meters per second squared is simply the Newton, right? Kilogram meters per second squared. Kilogram meters per second squared becomes the Newton. So I have 9,800 pi times 10x minus x squared times delta x, and all of this is the Newton. Units of force make sense. All right, let's think about distance. I have to go back up here to my picture for a moment. This little slab was at a height of x, and I'm pumping this all the way up to a height of 6. So 6 minus x is going to be my distance here. And then we're back to, or we're ready rather, to go ahead and write down our work equation. Always force times distance, but in this case, since our force is variable, we definitely need to integrate. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and just put everything in this time. 
here is my force. The delta x becomes a dx. And my distance, 6 minus x. Limits of integration. Sorry, I need my picture one more time. The water, or the, yeah, that was water, I guess, is all between 0 and 5. So my limits of integration will go from 0 to 5. And we're going to plug that all in. And I won't get an exact answer this time. I'm just going to put this one in the calculator the way it is. But as you saw, if you want an exact answer, you certainly can get one. Okay, and another pretty large value there. Over 7 million. And this would be Newton meters. All right, that brings us to the end of our work discussion. Again, three types of work that I want you to be able to calculate. Um, the lifting objects, the work required to stretch or compress a spring, and then now the work required to pump liquid out of a tank. So three applications of work that we've looked at. We will come back with one more video for section 6-7. Um, we're going to also do a bit with fluid pressure and force.